three, two, one. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us for another episode of Living, Living the, the Scream, Scream. Uh, the behind the scenes of The Mummy and the Monkey. That's right. It, you got your host, Janet and James with you. James with you. Wow. Mm, nose is all stuffy. Um, and just uh, normal stuffy, no sickness or nothing like that. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, wow, here we are again, another Monday night. Um, Monday fun day. Yeah, fresh as a daisy or something like that. I don't know. Something like that. I got a lot going on <laughs> in my head right now, so I'm trying to... Uh, so the gist of it is we're resellers by day, horror hosts by night, and half of this podcast talks about um, reselling or freelance work, um, you know, our regular day jobs, and then the other half talks about late night movie hosting you know, getting into character, our alter egos. In the tradition of uh, Elvira and, or uh, Sang- Sanguli out of, you know, Chicago. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, yeah, so uh, what do you want to talk about tonight? What's on the agenda? <laughs> so for the, the reselling, um, here's something that is interesting that I didn't really think of much before because I figured everyone can figure out how to do an eBay listing or how to get started on eBay. But Mm -hmm. we have had some friends in the past couple weeks um, call us, text us, or message us on Facebook saying, hey, you guys should make a video on how to get started on eBay. Mm. And I thought, you know, we could do that, sure, if that's what the people want. well, at so, least one people. At least one one people one people in particular right. <laughs> requested we do a video, but other people have asked us, well, how do you get started? What do you do? Um, and really, you just have to, to do it. But yeah, we will try to do well, a video. Well, that was simple. There you go, everybody. <laughs> yep. That's, wow. There you go. Um, Watch, you're getting red. Yeah. So we will, um, he's he's talk, commenting on the- You don't have to explain. Audio levels on the yeah. mic. That's okay. Um, so yeah, we, we do have a playlist on our YouTube channel called Monster Hustle that talks more about like the behind the scenes, the reselling, what we sold on eBay, what we found at thrift stores. And it's a lot of fun to show that. And we have to, uh, we're both trying to get better with videoing more of that because we mentioned on the podcast before when we get in the zone and we're looking for something, we don't really think to film everything. Some of, the, some of these other YouTubers, they film their whole lives, like every detail. They go out in public and just don't care. They've got their camera rolling. They they aren't uh, worried someone will say something or, or get nervous that, oh, I've got this camera the whole time. You know, I don't know. But yeah, so that's something that we could work on. We could um, film a how to get started. Now, I've been on eBay since 2000, well, yeah, around 2000. My one eBay account, it's been active since 2003. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the rules are now for new people to get started, but maybe one of us could start a brand new eBay account just to see what it looks like, to see how many listings they allow. Um, Because some some people have told us that they only allow you to list so many items when you're brand new, like a fresh reseller. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm not sure on on that because it's been, you know, like almost 20 years since I've signed on with eBay. And eBay is an old school site. I mean, they have been around since the 90s. Yeah. Late 90s. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it would would be interesting to get our ducks in the row and kind of come up with an idea of how to. Oh, I'm being hearkened. Uh, by our cat Louie. Um, he's uh, scratching my back. Um, yeah, and we get uh, you know a, a system together, or just a little bit of advice on how to begin uh, on eBay. A lot of people don't, um, and, and eBay's changed a little bit too since uh, over the last year or so uh, with the way uh, buyers can pay for things. So that has to be explained a little bit. Um, but it's actually a lot better, I think, with the. Uh, with the managed payments because people have more ways of paying for stuff and not just having they were, were in the past buyers had to have like a uh, you had to have a PayPal account to pay for stuff basically I remember buying not a, anymore my prom dress off of eBay in mm. 2002 mm-hmm. oh. and I yeah. remember having to send a money order I would go to oh, the geez. to the local Super Kmart and get a money mm. order yeah. for things I wanted to purchase online yeah 
I mean, now it's come a long way. Now they have the managed payments where, you know, yeah, every couple days they just do a direct deposit. Yeah. It's set up similar to Etsy. Um, I believe buyers can still pay with PayPal, but as a seller, they are getting rid of PayPal. Mm. I believe if they haven't already, probably this month or next month, they're, they're making changes. So uh, we've known about this, though, for a few years that they wanted to phase out PayPal. It's not like they sprung this on us at the last minute, right. but there's still some old school eBayers that um, are very upset by this change because they're so used to doing it the old way. Mm -hmm. But really, in the long run, it's going to save sellers because the fees aren't as high. You save maybe like 1% to 3% depending on what it is. Right. Yeah, and um, so, yeah, so we'll, we'll work on something like that to, to do, I guess. It'd, it'd be a lot of fun to put together a, um, you know, a sort of like a mini tutorial of how to get started uh on ebay and, and you said that they were uh that they requested that we do it like we're talking to a kid right or explain it to a, uh, somebody very young yeah to, to explain it everything very simply like as if yeah. um if you guys remember mr rogers neighborhood ah. where how are crayons made i don't know let's go to the crayon factory and find out that you know he, he was asking if we could explain everything very um you know like rudimentary yeah yeah to keep it very like basic break it down yeah. so it's very simple to understand 101 stuff yeah, yeah. so we'll, yeah, we'll give that a shot i think it'd be fun um what else on the reselling side well we um we uh had a couple of good uh trips to thrift stores this week uh definitely had, did really good at one goodwill we, we had a lot of fun digging through some stuff it was goodwill right yeah it was a honey hole duh um yeah yeah we went to the honey hole last week and then we also went to another goodwill just um, the other day yeah just, over yes, mother's day, just yeah. yesterday for mother's day and we hope our uh listeners out there had a good mom's day that's right treated their moms good all you mothers out there hope you had a good day but yeah we went and saw you know my mom lives with us and uh with janet and i and then we went and visited janet's mom uh, over her brother's house and uh hung out there talked uh whatever you know talked about the current events and stuff like that and um then wound up uh going to a uh a uh, goodwill out that way where she lives and did pretty well there i mean we found some really neat stuff i already sold one thing for 50 bucks from there i sold one thing for 22 yeah. but it's lightweight i sold a plushie um i found a lot of plushies there like plush um puppets yeah made by um a brand that's uh, pretty good so the the plushies there were only a buck 49 a piece yeah well, that was great because there, there was no sign that we saw anyway of how much everything was but what we did see is was was uh, and we looked up comps and stuff of the of the uh, plush that was available and the cool thing again was that we were there and th it was raining cats and dogs yesterday nobody was really i mean the goodwill wasn't that full usually like it usually is it didn't have as much attendance so again we felt like uh, we were kind of like uh headed to ourselves almost and it, we were lucky enough to where uh, you know the employees were coming out and putting stuff you know fresh you know fodder into the bins and on the shelves <clears throat> and we were like right there to, to check you know get first dibs yeah it was really nice because the, the weather was like really bad yesterday yeah. so when we were going out at it, the stores there weren't like a lot of people out yeah it rained all day and it even rained like a slushy snowy type of rain at points but yeah so uh when uh, they dumped a bunch of these uh plush animals in and then they were like puppet style animals or uh, yeah right yeah. yeah they're all puppets by a company which, which, yeah. uh, named uh, folk manis yeah and you recognize it to be a good brand yeah because i've sold that brand before yeah. and uh some of their plush like puppet animals are very detailed and nice looking and uh they're just cute yeah people, they're, people like them they're really nicely made and we didn't again we didn't see any price sign for it so but based on the brand janet's like well let's just get them because i mean how much could they be i mean it could be five or ten bucks they could have been mm -hmm. but this was actually one of those instances where we got something that they just want didn't want to deal with because when we got to the register we asked about how much the plush uh animals were and they said they're a buck 49 a piece so we're like wow i'm like i just looked there i didn't say anything we but we just like yeah this is good because you know a buck 49 and if, if you could turn that into 20 20 dollars 40 dollars that's a winner all day yeah i sold one of the plushies for 22 shipped but then i have some of the other ones that are fancier yeah. like a parrot a goat 
Um, some of those I have for like $30 shipped, $40 shipped. You sold a rat, you said, right? It was a, a mouse. Mouse puppet. Yeah, a little <sighs> mouse puppet. Yeah. And oh, I found a monchichi. Oh, that's right. A vintage one. <laughs> a I vintage one, monchichi. You, you said when you did your research, they, they actually still make them. Um, there was a... In Japan. It looked like they are, they are still making them. I could be wrong, but there was a, a Japanese seller on mm-hmm. eBay that has like a ton of them all in different colors and stuff. So yeah. I was wondering, are they still making them? And that's why there were so many like available overseas, but not in the States. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's really cute. Um, it's finding what, what other people miss. Yeah. I mean, or what they don't want to spend time on... Uh... Uh, pricing or looking up because you know some of that stuff is monotonous i imagine they get a lot of plush i mean and that stuff that's a whole nother rabbit hole to get down some of the uh, i think they go for what they do i mean and, and the odds that you're going to find like you know a hundred dollar plush is is lower than odds of finding a hundred dollar piece of jewelry jewelry or a purse you know a designer purse so well they i focus on that yeah and i know the goodwills don't necessarily sell jewelry anymore some mm. some goodwills will have like the jewelry jars you could buy or jewelry bags of just random Mm -hmm. but a lot of them aren't selling jewelry anymore they're just putting them on auctions online Mm -hmm. on their shop goodwill site and then um like some goodwills depending on the county or region you're in like the one we were at where we found those plushies all like the prices were like across the board so no matter what the plushie was it was a dollar 49 yeah no matter what the jeans are the jeans are 6.49 right uh, no matter what the shirts are, some of them are like three ninety nine. So if you find a nice designer shirt in there for three ninety nine, it could be a good sa- it could could be a good flip. And those kind of goodwills are the ones that I like to look at jackets and blazers. Every now and then, not too often, I'll find like a nice leather jacket or um, some designer jacket blazer type of thing where. If their jackets are between five and seven dollars, based on men's or women's, across the board, no matter what it is, I can find a nice jacket for like seven bucks. Maybe flip it for fifty or a hundred bucks. Mm. Um, so stuff like that. And then you said you found some CDs there. Um, yeah, nothing crazy with the CDs. Uh, I found some uh, cool toy stuff. I thought and, and uh, licensed things like well, the thing I just sold today that I listed last night was a Scooby-Doo waffle maker. Yes, it makes uh, waffles in the shape of Scooby-Doo's head. <laughs> and um, it was in the box. It was used, but um, you know, it's all obviously disclosed in my in my uh, listing. And but they were they were going for I mean selling for 50, 60, 70 bucks. If you had one new, you can maybe get even 90 for it if it was new in the box. Maybe even 100. But uh, yeah, I put it up for uh, I think I think I put it up for sixty, and then someone was interested. So you know, I I, I just shot a deal. Uh, no, no, no. Actually, they bought it for a full price for fifty bucks. Nice. Fifty or sixty. And then the other uh, the other thing I sold that, that wasn't from there it was from a VOA, uh, Volunteers of America. Was in, this is one of those bolos? Be on, uh, buy one like this one. Buy, what was be, on, it? be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. Yeah. Be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. Um, it, it uh, it's a for real. Hasbro made these talking parrot toys. Um, battery operated on a perch. Um, I think they're nineteen or two thousand four. They're not quite. They're not super old, but they they fetch really good prices. Um, this one worked. Had a broken foot, but it has a stand, and those are those usually are hard to find the stand. Uh, but the remote, if you can get the remote for these things, I've seen someone that's trying to sell a remote on there for eighty nine bucks for the uh, parrot remote. But uh, I put it up. I paid a buck ninety nine for the parrot. And the stand, this parrot's like a mechanical parrot, at least, I don't know, 12 inches tall. And um, it sold for, uh, I had it up for 60. Someone was interested. You know, I, I shot a, 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 an offer to a, a, a watcher for 50 and they bought it, you know, plus shipping. So that got shipped out this morning. Nice. So, yeah. So, I mean, those are nice little chunky sales. You know what I mean? Um, I like to find those. These are a little bit um more a little more expensive and uh, i found some c a a sealed old uh, wooden model kit for a a stagecoach from the early 70s and that um that i put up for a decent amount but i got a lot of watchers on some of the stuff i just listed last night because it was that good a stuff and it was cheap that was the thing that's what we were freaking out about i was like the prices were really good like i was looking through the toys section and i found a vintage marks toys um, horse, I think it might have been Jane West's horse mm-hmm. um, from the 60s and 
I paid three dollars for this toy horse and I listed it um, right now I have it at 75 free shipping but I think I'm gonna lower the price to 50 free shipping um, some of them sell anywhere between like 30 to 80 bucks right and you paid for... a few bucks for it so mm -hmm. that's crazy um... so it's fun finding that kind of stuff I was just it was just fun to look through a goodwill with it didn't have a lot of people yeah and on top of that we were finding neat things yeah uh, yeah and it, it, we had to stop ourselves at some point because you know it was um we had to go number one obviously to get home and feed our cats but we um we just uh we had we had enough we had we had carts full both of us had pretty much our carts full of stuff and um there's some stuff that i still need to list a few things but i pretty much listed everything i bought yesterday last night and that was good yeah, so the past couple uh, days for us has been list, list, list. Yeah. Like we had our listing booths set up in the living room watching our movies, our shows, and we were putting things online, and I was sorting through my Barbie doll death pile. Mm. And I have some Barbie updates. Uh, now, when you, now, I don't know if you explained this before, but when you do the, the Barbie doll stuff, you actually style the hair, you wash the hair, you clean them up. Yeah, like if I'm listing a Barbie doll, I will brush out the hair. Yeah, clean the, the doll. Like if it has like a pen mark on it, smudge marks if it looks dirty, I'll take a magic eraser and clean it up. I will take actual hair conditioner mm -hmm. and uh, wash the doll's hair with really hot water and condition it and, and comb it out and let it air dry to try to make it look a little more presentable for the pictures. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of fun, you know, it's kind of therapeutic. I have fun with it. That's neat, yeah, I mean. The toys are the most fun for me to sell. Um, same with the action figures. They're they're kind of like a doll. It's like the guy version of a doll or the comic book nerd version. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they have, um, if they look dirty I'll, or, or like covered in dust, I'll, I'll, t I'll clean them up with a magic eraser. But you have to watch with the paint on the dolls and the figurines. Yeah. Um, sometimes you don't want to use that if it's going to pull the paint up. Mm. So you just have to like see what works for you. It's bit depending on the toy. Um, and then with with Barbie, um, Mattel made an announcement um, this morning that they want to buy back people's old Barbie dolls. Now what's up with that? And then I guess you get a store credit mm. towards buying a new Barbie doll. And I know that they did do that back in the 60s where you would turn in your old Barbie doll and you would oh, get yeah. like a, uh, you know, maybe a dollar off your, your new Barbie or something. So th it's um, it's interesting because I'm thinking, no, donate all your Barbies so I can find them at the Goodwill. Or donate, donate them directly to you. Yeah, or just send all the Barbies to me. Yeah. <laughs> we do have a P.O. box that you can go to. There you go. I don't, I won't give you a discount on a new Barbie, but no, you know yeah, I'll take it off your hands. Different deal, yeah. <laughs> Just trying to get yeah, help you unload some junk, but um, yeah, yeah. So that that's interesting, you know. And we we both do our our, our share of cleaning up uh, the stuff that we buy as best we can. Um, and or you can just leave it as is and disclose it in the description and mm -hmm. <laughs> say, hey, comes as is, you know, there's some layer yeah, about it. I don't like to do that because I, I if but you're going to. things I do. Technically, by eBay's policy, you're not supposed to sell anything that's like filthy, gross, um, like unwashed, unclean. Yeah. Um, I bought a long time ago, a couple of years ago, a Mr. T doll on eBay just because I wanted it for my own collection. Spent about 20 bucks. And it was sent to me, but it's it reeked so bad of mold. It was mm. in worse shape than what I thought it was because when they took the pictures, it wasn't they weren't very clear pictures. So I did try to save them, but after a few months, I'm like, he's real grody. I you just got rid of him. I, I I think I got I think I threw him out because he oh, he was like that. too moldy. I tried oh, to save him, and I couldn't get that mold smell out. Wow. And then on top of that, like, he was just real beat up. I felt bad for Mr. T. Yeah, I pity the fool. So, yeah, I don't want to, if I don't like buying things like that, I don't want to sell something like mm. that. You want common sense stuff. So, like, if you're an eBay seller, you you have to remember, like, well, when I go shopping, what do I like to buy? What condition, even though it's used, do I like? I mean, you don't want to buy something that's smelling like mold or cigarettes. I'm surprised you cigarettes. didn't return it. It was it was past the return yeah, but date. Yeah, when you first got it. Yeah, well, at first I thought, oh, no big deal, I'll clean them up. And uh, I think I had them sitting maybe in the garage or in the basement for a while. In and the basement. 
Yeah, and then months later, I go back to to check him out, and I try to clean him up, and he just I couldn't save him. Mm. So, Mr. Yeah. Dirty. <laughs> Another company that's Dang. buying back things is Levi's. Uh. So Levi's is buying; they're buying people's old jeans, and that gives you store credit to buy a new pair of jeans. Jeans. Um. And it, make, it makes me wonder if these big companies are doing that because of resellers, because they don't want people to just donate their jeans and have resellers buy it and resell them, or if they think they can sell used um, stuff and get a piece of the reselling pie. Um, I'm not sure. I have, I have uh, you know, it's, it's just weird to me. And Interesting ploy. I, yeah, I mean, I, without reading more on it, I can't, um, I don't know what the their, their, their motive is, but... It wouldn't surprise me if they were trying to, in fact, do that and, and, and uh, make uh, just just take that part of the pie away from uh, you know entrepreneurs that are doing reselling. So who knows? Yeah, I mean, I, it makes me wonder if some of these business some of the businesses are just trying to squash the small resellers, mm -hmm. and I hope that's not the case. I like to think in my mind uh, a more positive view that there's plenty of stuff for everyone, and there's always going to be like stuff um secondhand stuff that you can find and resell uh -huh. because i mean really we are the country of people collecting stuff that, yeah. <laughs> there's there's a lot of things that people buy and collect and a lot of people things that people donate and part with or sell mm -hmm. so yeah and a uh, garage sale season should be coming up soon yeah and i'm definitely going to hit a lot of those i'm trying to get i'm gonna i'd like to get up early go out early score early get everything that's Before way to everyone do else it. gets it, yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> and uh, yeah, since uh, you know things are, um, we've elected to become vaccinated, so we're hoping that's another part of the another layer in um, in getting uh, things back to normal. And if not that, then at least some sort of protection um, for us when we're out and about, you know, yeah, doing things in the public again. So because you know we miss that. I mean, who doesn't miss doing their routine or doing you know. Uh, especially if it's a part of the way you make your living, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you know, I, I'm, it's it's a way to protect ourselves and others, and that's our opinion on it. Um, yeah. And we hope other people out there are staying safe. It's not a political thing. It's it's a way to keep people healthy and to try to prevent Possibly, yeah. try to prevent uh, you know all this. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. You know, um, but that's you know, but but that was holding us back last year a little bit, obviously, because um, you know there, there was just so much unknown about what's going on, and uh, now we're we're a little bit more a little bit more educated on it. But who knows what will will pop up? But we can't stop living, and um, but we will stop living in this house if we don't pay for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know. So anyway, yeah, you know, but uh, but it's all, all is good, you know, and uh, we're hoping to do more of it. You know, I'd like us to both be equipped with, with a um, with some sort of recording device, digital device, and you know, go out and about and then uh, put together videos as often as we can. Yeah, I think I have to get another GoPro. Where yeah, where yeah we could each carry yeah, one. I'll, I'll get I'll get my own gear and everything, and and get my own thing going on it, and just try to do my. You know, share that although i am really liking i was learning some settings on um our canon m50 the uh, little hybrid camera that we shoot our some of our mummy monkey videos on and take pictures on mm -hmm. and um i'm really liking how that looks for youtube yeah with the little bit we did shoot on it so maybe i could um, you don't want to lug that around though it is a lot to lug around and but how can you tell focus and everything i don't know yeah but some people will, like some of those YouTubers, they just walk around with this big camera and they just think nothing of it. So maybe... Well, if it's hanging around your neck, maybe people <laughs> will just think you're lugging a camera around and not taping them. Maybe. So we'll have to figure it out. But yeah, yeah. we're wanting to record more of like the buying process and, and what we find like as we find it. Yeah, because the last few trips we went out, um, you know, and this happens every so often, but I'm like, man, if we could only have taped this and uh, me finding this stuff, you know, when I first like pull you know when I, when I look at a shelf and I move something over I'm like I, I'm audibly going oh my god you know uh, when I find something I think is really good or I, or I know is really good and it would be cool uh, for you know other people to, to watch that actual discovery happen in real know? time yeah instead <laughs> of say you know I mean, because obviously we can come back and do a haul video and go hey look what we found but 
it's like finding it's the fun part. You people know? like to see um, other people shop. Yeah. It's a thing. And we like to watch it. It's fun. It's like you're vic- vicariously shopping through them. Yeah. So we'll work on that and try to make better, um, you know, on location videos and, and hunting videos because, man, it's that's the best part of it. Right. And when we watch other people do it. That's what we enjoy. It's like it's like we're there, you know, watching this stuff be found right then and there. But, yeah. So those are goals, goals we have for uh, mm-hmm. the, the the very near future here on Monster Hustle. All right. Well, I think we should uh, roll on over to uh, the other monster side of uh, this podcast, and that would be the Mummy and the Monkeys goings ons. Woohoo! All right, so we're gonna get into that right now. All righty, diety. It's time to talk Mummy Monkey. Yeah, the Mummy Monkeys Harry Scary Hangout, the Mummy Monkeys Harry Scary Hangover our uh, YouTube and Facebook shows uh, that we stream live Friday nights at 10 p.m. Uh, for the Facebook show. And then midnight, we roll on over to our YouTube channel and do an hour or so of the Harry Scary Hangover, where we talk uh, about whatever we uh, come up with uh, the, night, the day before, usually, a subject. Uh, and, um, but, we, you know, but both shows are streaming mm-hmm. uh, with a live a streaming audience that uh, comment uh, amongst each other and with us throughout the shows. And what's nice is um, thanks to our friend Kenji over at the Public Media Network in Kalamazoo, Michigan, uh-huh. the uh, cable channel out there. They do have a Roku channel, a Fire Stick, and an Apple TV. And while we are live on Facebook, he has it set up where we simulcast mm-hmm. on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire Stick. And it's under Public Media Network. And then all the other days during the week at midnight he will um replay some of our reruns on there but it's like live in real time so they don't have like a video on demand you just Mm -hmm. have to watch it live when it's on there right right simulcast yeah so that's that's really fun and i was looking at our numbers yeah you just went through everything yeah so since January 1st, and it's now May 10th, 2021, Mm -hmm. in five months, four months, about four or five months, Mm -hmm. we have, um, I counted up all the the Facebook views just from the Facebook movie shows that we host, Mm -hmm. and we have 80,000 views. Woo! A collect, yeah, a collective total of 80,000 views. Wow. So, Woo! Our first year of live streaming, we had 100,000 views for that year when I counted up all the views from each episode. Now, some YouTubers get that many views per episode. Per <laughs> per video, yeah. Or per video. This is uh, yeah. collectively oh, from the past four months or so. Yeah, that's the thing. That's one of those things that uh, you hear a lot of YouTubers, you know, and, and Facebook, but more YouTubers talk about how to break that um, breakout. How do you how do you get to be uh, into the thousands of views for each video you upload? Um, I've seen many uh, YouTubers start out with the you know the the modest uh, number of, of subscribers and watchers, and then overnight it's just like it seems over like overnight they uh, they take off. I mean their numbers totally change. Is it a show that they're on? Someone that you know that that likes them, that promotes them, and helps them get, you know, I don't know how they do it. Well, it's kind of like, and this is from what I've seen and noticed, the Roger. So there's the Roger Corman style of filmmaking, where you have a flashy mm. um, movie poster that looks right. really cool. Yeah. You have an interesting looking trailer. Yep. And the movie itself could suck. It could be a bad, bad movie. But people will go and see that movie because it looked interesting in the trailer and the poster artwork looked really cool. Right. So I'm relating that to comparing that to YouTube because there's been YouTubers that have said like a catchy title, um, a cool like a, a nice looking or, a, you know, flashy thumbnail picture and maybe like a little preview before the episode starts can help you get views almost like uh, what they call that clickbait type of thing and i don't want yeah. to be clickbaity where it's like a misleading thing what about ned beating what is that nothing i i that went over my head right okay <laughs> I, I i can't reach that's okay it went over my head Bad joke. Go ahead. <laughs> um but maybe we could do something like that where we go through our past videos or or maybe just moving on in the future we try to make it 
give it a more catchy title mm. or, or make a nice thumbnail for it and then even maybe do like a little preview video and it's a lot a lot to do it is a lot to do but um mm-hmm. it seems to work with with others and it, there's a lot of um like some people who like live stream a lot they they get a following too it helps build up their following and we've we've been live streaming on a regular basis on youtube so i hope that helps at some point Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah i mean i don't know if there's a particular formula or an actual like uh thing that can be done but um sometimes it's the way you network too if you get into like a, a group of other uh, like like video uh, themed uh, you know uh, crowds or whatever like with reselling if we hook up with the right reseller out there you know get to know them they may just talk us up on one of their episodes and it carries you know, they'll go check us out you know that kind of thing um, and it's good to be genuine too of course we want to build it up but we have to still keep it to like who we are and keep it real yeah and um well, yeah well, i thought we were doing that but and we are we are but i was also talk, uh, <laughs> you know like we don't want it to be click baby where it's like you know something that's well but i mean tabloid ish how do you stand out in a in a sea an ocean a literal ocean full of other like videos and just anything i mean it doesn't have to be like videos i mean people are you know you're really trying to wave down that that viewer out there and let them know what you're doing um, and that's the million dollar question. Mm. That's a tough question. How do you, or a tough, yeah. How, how do we do that? I don't, well, not that we don't know, but we just need to keep on pushing and, and, and keep on making more content. Uh, interesting content, well edited content. Mm-hmm. I think that helps, unless you're trying to go for the crappy look on the purpose out there. And that can work too. Um, but uh, who knows? I mean,. Like I said, I don't know. Probably many books written written on it, many videos made on it, but mm-hmm. none of them are guaranteed. So it's just a matter of implementing one or um, or a dozen of those uh, models and trying to make it work for whatever you're doing. So, well, we had some people ask, "Are you going to make new skits?" Yeah. We we are working on new comedy skits. We actually um, last Friday or Thursday, yeah. I think it was Thursday. We actually filmed half of a skit with Stasha and Yashu. Yes. Our um, Parma characters. Half a skit. Yeah. They're uh, from the old country. They're a certain ethnic. Um, Let's but, hope, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we filmed about half of it, and then the weather started getting really crappy. Yeah. And, uh, well, yeah, and some of it had to do with actual location, too. Uh, um, we, we weren't 100% prepared for... Uh, filming certain parts of the skit so um but i i think i got a way around that um to where we can film almost anywhere so but i still need to to make that prop so it's cool. crazy well, well we'll get it done and we should have some nicer days this week and then we also um have some you wrote down some wonderful ideas for some other skits you're really good at writing you're a very good storyteller oh shucks you know well you are. I, you know, they're not just ideas; they're actual full scripts. You know, for these two uh, bananas, which is a te- our takeoff on the old uh, Western TV show Bonanza. It stars Grim Fartright, who is uh, obviously my grim, ca- gory character dressed up in a cowboy hat and uh, Western duds. And then you're his uh, best girl, uh, Miss Rita. Rita, the saloon girl. The saloon girl. Oh, Grim. Yeah. And what so, incarnation, uh, Graham? Yeah, so we, you know, I wrote up a couple uh, uh, skits I had in my uh, in my head for a little bit, so they fermented long enough at time to get them out and then actually put them. Out. So we're hopefully putting that together this week. We shall see. Yeah. Um, well, we'll try to shoot what we can shoot, um, and then yeah, just just try to do our best. We haven't picked out a movie yet for this Friday for episode one twenty five. We have not. And, um, but there's a lot of movies that we did play, like, you know, a year or two ago that when we hosted it, our internet connection sucked. Yeah, we, we've had And a, we, we yeah. didn't realize it. We've had a, a bad internet connection, bad equipment, you know, as far as the stuff going out, uh, the cables were all wrong, make and model and all kind of stuff. And we had a guy come in last year and did a really bang up job hooking us up with a better modem and, a be- and better cables and all that kind of stuff, so... Or router, I should say. So, um, yeah. So we got uh, we're def- now now we're we're flowing like nothing. No no frames are getting dropped. 
um, any issues on uh, with anything being viewed is usually on the other person's end on their you know service or whatever. Um, but we're 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 flowing fine, you know, nothing, you know, not missing anything out of, out of our output, you know. Um, but yeah, so um, we need to pick out a movie, and I, I lost my train of thought there. But uh, but yeah, we what I was saying is or suggesting is to have time to shoot more skits, oh, we yeah. could replay maybe an older movie that um, our new fans have not seen. Right, maybe or, something that we haven't seen in a long time. Or if you, if you did see it, you might not even recognize it because so much of it was chopped out because of the choppy connection, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or they, you know, they had bad buffering problems, you know, from our end. So, I think they're worth checking out again. And as much work as I put into some of these, they they need to be replayed more than you know at least once. Yeah. Adding sound effects and drop-ins and visual goofy stuff, you know. It's fun. You're really good with the sound effects too. I love doing it. And I'll clean up the studio and I, I help with the costumes and do a lot of the social media stuff and, yeah. and answering emails and um so we you know we make a good team i think so <laughs> i hope they think so too i there. hope you guys think so <laughs> that's what's most important who cares what we think yeah no but we yeah we, we, we really we really are trying and um uh it's led us to hopefully not we're beating a dead horse here but led us to the hey louie it led us to uh getting a little bit of a um a stint on a new local horror hosted show called the Big Bad B Movie Show, where we're, we're basically content providers. We we, we at least uh, we we submit a one skit each week uh, to be aired on the show. So and they they just play that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um you know fairly easy for us. We just put a skit together. Uh. <laughs> and with with the pandemic and everything, they only allow so many people in the studio. But yeah, we we discussed that more like a podcast or two ago. Mm-hmm. And if you guys have not heard our past podcast shows, you what? can you can listen in here on uh, on our YouTube channel. Mm. But um, with the mummy and the monkey, so we have a few. Last week we talked about it, and it is confirmed we will be on oh. a virtual event panel with Sven Gulli. Yes, nationally syndicated Sven Gulli from Meet TV. Yeah. With uh, David Dust Malshin, he's a Hollywood actor. Well, he's, he put this together. This is he, his panel. Right. That's what I was going to lead into mm-hmm. or, or discuss next. He is um, a Hollywood actor, and he he's putting this panel together and hosting the panel. He also has his own horror host character, Doctor Fearless. But he wrote the Dark Horse comic book series Count Crowley, and it takes place in the 1980s. It's about a horror hostess from the Midwest. She has a cool punk rock kind of look. Um, it is a really good comic series. He's a good, uh, good actor. Seems like an all-around nice guy. It'll be our first time talking with him virtually. Our first time, you know, seeing Sven Gulli on a panel with us. Um, Dr. Sarcophagi will also be there. He's he's a funny uh, comedian, like a horror host type of character. He also does animations, right? Is he the one that does cartoons? So. Uh, who else? Marlena Midnight from Midnight Mausoleum. She's on TV in Iowa and uh, the Quad Cities area. And she'll be on the panel as well. And then there's a newer hostess, um, Moldovia, um, Queen of Screams, I believe. I'm trying to remember the name. But she's, I think, more of a YouTuber where she does movie reviews. I don't know if she actually plays the movies. I saw a bunch of movie reviews on her YouTube. And it looks like some of them get get some good views. Mm. Uh, so it'll be really fun. And that's this Saturday, um, May 15th at yeah. 5 p.m. Yeah. Eastern. And all the information is on midmaymassacre.com. Yeah, you got it right this time. We both thought it was midday massacre at one point, but no, it's midmay massacre. Midmay massacre. Massacre. Yeah, it's it sounds like a, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and I'm, I'm I don't know. I just uh, and I know they did it last year, and uh, it's really cool to be involved this year. Wow. I mean, I feel like we've uh, we've made it, and that's it. After this, there's nowhere else to go. <laughs> no, nah. we could just you know rest on our laurels there. Yeah, be no. done with it, huh? We were no. on this panel, no. It, but it is special to us, and we really are excited about being on there. It was just, it was nice that they even his people even emailed us to ask yeah. because I was like, oh wow, he knows of us. I didn't even think he would. Well, there you go. You never know who might know about you when it comes to being a mummy and a monkey. 
So that, oh, that's awesome. We're yeah. looking forward to it. And then we have another virtual event with the North Royalton Public Library mm -hmm. sometime in October. We don't have the date yet, but we're going to talk about our um, The Mummy and the Monkeys um, Halloween flick, pick. flick picks. Yeah. Our Halloween uh, movie picks to get you in the Halloween spirit, to get the Halloween feels. Mm -hmm. And we're going to partner with the library and they're going mm. to have these movies in stock for people to borrow. Nice. Yeah. I thought that would be a good idea because if you, you know, what you don't want to do is re review movies to watch during Halloween and not have a way to see them. So I think they should be able to, I wonder if there's a way to rent them digitally, like, or not rent them, but borrow them digitally, like, like they do, like that limited. Well, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. They do that with, I think they have ebooks too, where yeah, you can are. sign on their site and, and download an ebook or something. On your Kindle, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's really neat that they do stuff like that. And, yeah. our, you know, your tax dollars go to the libraries. So you might as well take advantage of the, the books and the uh, movies that you could borrow from your local library. A cat fight in the background. Our cats are wrestling. Are you guys okay? Just from there. Should we comment their uh, <laughs> comment the cat wrestling? I rang the bell. <laughs> bing bing bing. Round two, fight. <laughs> yeah. Louie has Earl pinned down. Earl has the kicky feet move. Yes, and now they're going for the stare down. Who will attack first? Who? Their ears are back. Oh yeah. <laughs> the paws are up. See, that commentating's not that 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 easy, is it? No, not really. Well, especially when nothing's happening. I stopped because I think they heard us talking about them. But, yeah, so um, so lots going on. And then we have that thing no uh, planned in November, possibly, right? Uh, November 6th and 7th is Akron Comic Con. Yeah. And most likely, yeah, we're going to we're gonna be there um, in person, which Yay. will be interesting. I did ask what they're, what they're doing with all that, with the safety. They said they're working with the local health department, and so it's right. whatever the health department advises. Right. Um, so that way they can even have an event mm -hmm. because, you know, they've got restrictions on, on large gatherings. Everybody must be submersed in a vat of rubbing alcohol, 90%, and wearing <laughs> some sort of breathing, breathing apparatus to surround. And you have to wear a hazmat suit to walk in. and Not a has-been suit. You don't want to wear that. <laughs> But yeah, so lot, lots, question mark, going on with the Mummy and the Monkey as far as personal appearances. But we got some virtual events coming up, and maybe those will be uh, eligible for the Rondo next year if we do some virtual events. Maybe. In that category. Um, there's also some radio station, uh, some like online radio guys that contacted us. We're supposed to be interviewed tomorrow on KSDAD Radio out of Tennessee. So I have to confirm to see if we're still on for that day. Tennessee. Or if we're going to reschedule that. Yeah. But uh, nice guys, you know, they talk about movies and, and current events and um, mm -hmm. celebrity stuff. Oh, don't we have something tomorrow night? Yeah, I said tomorrow. Oh, what time's the Mads? Tomorrow? Oh. I don't know what. <laughs> well, we maybe we could see, uh, yeah, we maybe could... we could reschedule it. Because I think he had some stuff going on where, you know, we, we were talking and he was going to let me know if this yeah, week was well, good. And he had to cancel last week because he had problems on, with his internet. Some internet issues, yeah. yeah. Right, well, I'll figure it out. So, yeah, I mean, we're we're, we're open to, um, like, the, the call-in, the radio shows, the podcasts, you know. We love that stuff. There was one podcaster, and I, I, I feel bad we didn't get back to him. It was about comic books. I hmm. think we lost contact with him or... Or he got tired of waiting on us. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, we're, we're usually open with that stuff. And if we don't respond back right away, it's it's nothing mm -hmm. personal. Sometimes I forget or we get caught up with other things. Right. So that's uh, the events as of right now. Mm -hmm. um, Cinema Wasteland is kind of up in the air from what I saw with their public posts. They're going to see how this summer goes first before they announce anything for October. They wanted to do a one-day show this summer and then do the, uh, you know, October show. Hmm. But he, they don't want to have to deal with uh, regulations and, and trying to um, get people to cooperate because, you know, people are people. Yeah. And... Um, he, he, if uh, things are looking better this summer where they don't have to regulate things so much, then, then they were going to do the October show. Right. 
So we'll see. I mean, it's all sort of like a very arbitrary and very organic at this point, but we're hoping that, uh, you know, people um, do what they can to, 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 to help quell this and that we, we can all get back to, to something that resembled normal over a year ago. So <laughs> that'd be nice, right? Be great. To be just, great. you know, have things be better. It'll be fantastic. I would love it. It'd be awesome. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm all out of it today. Yeah, kind of lethargic. Don't know what's wrong with me, but um, who knows? Just uh, been a long day. Yeah. But, yeah. We've been working on stuff. The nice thing is we did get some stuff sent to us by fans. Yes, two packages. We had two packages and a postcard sent to us. So thank you guys and gals for listening and watching. And uh, we'll probably share that. Probably share those this Friday. We'll save them for Friday. Oh yeah, for sure. It'll be fun to open them up live on the air. That makes it an event, you know. That makes it fun. And yet another virtual event. We have 125 virtual events. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so many. Well, they are technically virtual events. If you mm-hmm. think about it, they're virtual, and they're event. They're they're on that night. They're on the night of. They are eventful. Kind of makes sense. Well, I don't know how eventful they are, but they are. <laughs> they are like. But no, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens with all that other stuff and appearances and whatnot. But we'll keep you posted. You can count on that. Oh yes. So I'm trying to think of any other mm. mummy and the monkey news. Business sold some T-shirts. We got a sale going on. If anybody wants to hit that uh, sale on our Teespring account. Oh, good idea. So we have a Teespring store, and the link will be in the video description, and it will also be on our website. Uh, we have T-shirts, hoodies, tank tops. All kinds of cool things, cool mummy and the monkey swag, different designs. We even have a Cleveland butthole T-shirt. That, butthole of the world. The butthole of the world, because that's what our current mayor said. That um, how other cities perceived Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, some do. So as the butthole of the world. You can get fifteen percent off your order, no matter what you order from our Teespring store, and the code through the rest of May is all in capital letters. It's May Monster. Mm. Me monster. M O N S T E R. Spelled like it sounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. So definitely, that would be the the fifteen fifteen percent off will be for the entire purchase of whatever you buy on the store. So yeah, when you go to check out, you just type yeah. in the coupon code May Monster. See, we're thinking about you out there. I want to save you some bucks. Yes, and it supports what we do, and then yeah. you also get a discount. So. Me? Well, well oh, you not mean the you. people you're talking to? The the, the person or people okay. listening? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Okay. You get a discount. <laughs> That's awesome. So good. So yeah, and it's uh, all we can do. And we also figured something else out. We talked about wanting to do a uh, an award show for the fans, um, and we want to call it the Fannies. But then we received, and I didn't even think about this because it's not such a big deal over here. But uh, we, I think we got a, an email from across the pond, and to let us know. And I did know this. I just didn't register it right away. That over there in the in the old land of Ing. England, in, the U- in the UK in the area, UK, yes, the that the word the term fanny is is reflective. You know, in our what we meant by it is we're kind of like a, a play on the word fan. You know, like Emmys, the you know the Oscars, the Emmys, the, you know the fannies. Well, and, and you know, and, and we were going to have it shaped like a butt too. You know, the, the award, but uh, but it's basically the, to award the fans out there who who are like the biggest fans of. Uh, horror hosting and some other categories we're gonna come up with, but anyway, um, yeah, we were we were informed that uh, the word the term fanny means something else totally different over there. It's a, it's a word for <laughs> for female a certain female um, body part. Yeah, we'll just say located that located in the southern region. Yes, of the front in the southern part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, it, it doesn't mean it's the opposite of what we say. Like the, to us, a fanny would be a butt. Well, would be a butt, a booty, your yeah. behind. But which could be a man or a woman, woman's butt. But a fanny is partic- is specifically what's in front of a butt of a female. I should say. Does that make any sense? Whatever. <laughs> it's it's your female nether region lady bits. Your hey nanny nanny. That yeah. that's what that means, I guess, in the UK. Your fanny. So if you get a fanny award over in England, then well. <laughs> You gotta explain it. You got some explaining to do. To do. <laughs> That's hilarious. You got some explaining to do. Yeah, well, it's crazy. The, so the band Kiss, um, the word Kiss in Arabic means um, it's it's a a slang term for lady bits as well. Spelled the same way. I think it's spelled the same way. Yeah. So I think that's funny too. Mm. Mm-hmm. The more you know, you learn the something. Less you did. And yeah, <laughs> your brain cells. Jeez. Aren't uh yeah. 
We're, we're not that educational here. Mm. <clears throat> but, ha, I said but. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well you could say that. It, 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 it's related. It relates. But, yeah, well, I think uh, we can wrap it up here with that because uh, I'm running out of steam. I got some more work I got to do tonight, but I need to get back into the, the, the groove here. But uh, we're trying to uh, get something out to you tonight as we do every night for the past, what, five nights? This is our fifth show back. I think so. Yeah. So uh, we're going to try to do this every Monday night. So you, and, and it'll be up at the end of the night or in the morning, Tuesday morning. But when it's up, then, you know, it'll be ready for you to listen to. So Yeah. So thank you guys nah. and gals and, and um, all you people for Struggling. watching, yeah. for listening. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. And click the little bell next to subscribe. So then when we upload something or go live, you get a notification. That way you don't miss anything. That's right. And 23% of our listeners and viewers have not subscribed yet. What? I know, right? 20-something percent of our uh, viewers have not subscribed. Mm. Well, then they better do that. Please do. Please hit hit subscribe. That's right. And uh, thank you. As Janet Takei would say, my alter ego, good night, good fright. Mm-hmm. That's right. And as Grim Gory's alter would say, uh, see you later, alligators. <laughs> oh, that was weak. <laughs> That's even worse. I don't know. Ah, maybe next week. Ha, ha, ha. That's better. <laughs>